welcome back. It is 1040 and we've got Amin here from Louisiana State University. He's going to be sharing a little bit about machine learning and AI to analyze power systems. So Amin, are you here with us? I see you. we got you as a panelist looking for your face here. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. I see Amin. Hold on just one second. I think he might be just waiting for it to start, but we've got him right here. We'll just give him one second. Hope everybody's enjoyed the presentation so far. We're on our fourth presentation and we do have one, one more after this and then we will lead into our lunch panel. So if you have any questions throughout the day, like I've mentioned before, jot them down in the Q&A box. We have, I think we've got two questions we weren't able to get to throughout the day. Um, but most of them we've been able to get to and somebody did ask earlier if we were able to see the presentations later and they will be available on demand after the presentation so stick, you will be getting something later this week with more information so thank you everyone for joining us we'll just give him in one more second see where where he's at he's on so yeah i'm ready you ready all right yeah sorry about that i thought this is actually 10:40. Central time. <laughs> I, was, I was getting no, ready for one hour from now. <laughs> you made it in time, so we are good. To go. I'll go ahead and run your slides for you so you can go ahead and introduce yourself and get started. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Amin. I'm an assistant professor at LSU. Uh, I work on uh, power grid and optimization and application of machine learning into power systems and smart grid. And uh, so recently, I've, I, I paid more attention to the application of M, uh, machine learning to optimization and smart grids. And um, I've been working with different companies uh, to, to, uh, on different projects uh, for, based on you know, for application of machine learning to uh, real-time power system, actually power system and solve their existing problems. So how, how, how okay, you, you uh, Brianna, you go to the next step, correct? I don't need to do anything. All right, yep, go. I got it all for you. We're good to go. <laughs> okay, good. You see it? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so after I, I I started moving to machine learning six years ago, I was working with a company, and they said we have a lot of data. We don't know what to do with that data, and. And so it came to our mind that, okay, we can do you know, data analytics and machine learning based on the abandoned amount of data that you know, these utility companies that they have. And uh, Power Grid, it is becoming a kind of complex system. Uh, many people are saying this is the most complex machine ever built by human being. And uh, new technologies are coming to the grid, uh, like, like renewable energy, electric vehicles, and these kind of technologies make uh, operation and management of power grid much more challenging. So I think you know machine learning and AI is a potential solution to address these talent challenges. So in my presentation, I'm going to uh, actually uh, cover uh, three general topics. Uh, first one is how to fork, uh, I mean forecast, monitoring, and security action scheduling in power grid using machine learning. Uh, second pr topic is uh, solving optimization problem and scheduling problems in power grid with machine learning. And the third pr topic is uh, power uh, grid consumption and resilience uh, and pandemic. And how can we use machine learning to, I don't know, uh, to, uh, to, to, to actually predict power consumption and to enhance grid resilience. So in general, when we say application of machine learning into power grid, this is a chart that I copied from one of my papers. Uh, I'm, here I'm trying to show uh, you know, where we can apply machine learning in power grid. So generally speaking, when we say power grid, we, have, we, can, we can divide it to generation, transmission, and distribution. And some people say also demand response. Uh, machine learning has been applied in all different actually sectors of power grid, for example, for unit commitment, which is a huge optimization problem, or for renewable energy prediction, for you know, demand 
uh, for load prediction, for price prediction, those kind of stuff, no, uh, uh, renewable energy, uh, uh, machine learning has been applied to. And not only for prediction, for monitoring the grid, for uh, actually reducing complexity of you know, uh, power, uh, uh, power system and problems like you know, unit commitment, like uh, a pl transmission plan. So I'll focus on the first topic, and uh, machine learning and forecast, monitoring and proactive and active security action schedule. Forecast. This is the most obvious actually topic that we should work on. Uh, in Power Grid, uh, we need uh, to forecast demand. And after, I mean, if all generators are fossil fuel, you don't need to uh, forecast them, but uh, integration of renewable energy, you need to forecast the power produced by renewable uh, resources like wind and, uh, and solar. Uh, otherwise, you may put the system in trouble. Uh, you may, it, I mean, large violations of, um, uh, large prediction errors may cause system, uh, I mean, may, 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 may cause actually problems in the system uh, may, they may also lead to blackout. So definitely we want to forecast demand and renewable generation. Demand is not that difficult to, to predict, but renewable generation is very you know, uh, challenging to predict, particularly for long uh, time actually period, like one week, two weeks, three weeks. It is a bit challenging to predict uh, power produced by wind and solar. Uh, machine learning, is a potential actually solution for renewable generation prediction and demand forecast. So they can help us to have more accurate forecast. So more accurate forecast means it's more secure and an economical operating point. And one of the things that, one of the projects that I did was using combina a kind of hybrid, not hybrid, combination of two learners convolutional neural networks and gated recurrent unit to predict a demand and wind power for power systems. So why we use two uh, CNN? Because we have temporal connectivity, uh, uh, spatial connectivity between actually power pr produced by units, uh, or um, I mean wind farm or demand. And also why GRU? Because they are time dependent because of temporal correlation. Uh, this is a very simple application of machine learning to renewable generation and demand forecast. So monitoring. The forecast is very obvious. Many people have been working on that. Monitoring is a very important problem that have gained a lot of attention recently using machine learning. Monitoring has been in Power Grid for, for a long time. We have to monitor every single component in Power Grid. Uh, so application of machine learning and power grid monitoring has gained a lot of attention recently. One of the examples that I, I brought here is uh, we can use, uh, actually we proposed this one to a utility company and we are working on that with that utility company. I cannot mention their name, but I can tell you, you know, that we are, we have started working with that company on actually finding probability failure of electric power component, like transformers, like generator, transmission lines, the, the cap capacitor band. Uh, we, we use machine learning, mixture density network, uh, to find probability, density, a function uh, of failure rate of transformers and transmission line. So when the when system is working, uh, if, if actually you can detect uh, which component may fail, uh, uh, which component has a higher probability of failure, you can reschedule your system very quickly. I'm talking about in, in a couple of seconds. Uh, to, to actually avoid outage of that system, you can also use machine learning to detect which component may fail in the next couple of seconds and which component's failure has severe impact on the grid. So you can detect uh, actually high risk uh, components and protect them in a couple of seconds 
Um, because if we, uh, if we do not protect them, uh, maybe maybe after a couple of seconds, let's say the transformer is overloaded. If that transformer fails, the load will propagate to other components, and it may cause a cascade failure. Indeed, there is the cause of many outages and blackouts in, in power grid is cascade failure. So if we can detect uh, probability of outage of important component and avoid uh, uh, outage of that component or be prepared for that outage so we can, pre we can prevent a lot of ca cascade failures uh, and blackout in power grid. So our solution for this problem is mixture density network that we use historical data collected by, the, by operators and utility companies and use mixture net density network to predict uh, actually to, to estimate probability density uh, function uh, of failure rate of components. Uh, no, when, when, we, now, when we monitor the grid, then we need to uh, make decisions. We need to do proactive or active security actions, action scheduling. Proactive means when you monitor a component and you see that the component is vulnerable and may fail, probability of failure is, let's say, 60%. Uh, I'm talking about the real-time system operation. It means system is working. You want to see at 10 seconds from now or one minute from now how, how much is probability of failure of component number one. So when you monitor that, then if you see that component may fail and its failure leads to you know, uh, severe uh, consequences in the, in the grid, you may want, and uh, not you may, definitely you have to uh, protect your system. You have to do some proactive uh, actions. Uh, may, most of them are based on optimization problem or based on system analysis. Those kind of decision making, it takes time. It, it is very time consuming, particularly if you want to solve an optimization problem and to find what kind of proactive uh, uh, actions I can do. For example, a proactive action could be reduce power produced by unit number one and increase power produced by unit number two to relieve a load on the system on that on, uh, uh, that particular transformer. If that kind of problems, uh, if you want to solve an optimal uh, optimization problem, it takes time, and you ha uh, you have to do some you know, some actions in a couple of seconds. You cannot wait for a couple of minutes to solve an optimization. So machine learning is a very good, uh, actually, tool to solve this problem. What we can do, you can uh, monitor the grid, then predict uh, what would happen in the grid. Let's say predict demand one minute from now and see what kind of actions do I need to do before uh, actually re reaching to that demand level. So machine, you can train an online learning for preventive or proactive decision making in power grid. Active security decision making. So sometimes a component fails and you can you cannot prevent that failure. So the same thing happens. Okay, if a component fails, you have a couple of seconds to react and avoid system uh, instability. So if you want to solve optimization problem or you know, in a computationally expensive nonlinear system of nonlinear equation, it takes time. So another possibility is application of machine learning. We have been working on this project for you know, NSF, and actually we are preparing the proposal for NSF right now. Uh, but we, our preliminary result on this project was, was very good. We could save a lot of time and we could do actually proactive and active can, uh, security action scheduling much, much faster than solving optimization problem with accuracy more than 95%. Okay, uh, now let's go to a bit more detail and application of machine learning in optimization. We have in Power Grid, we solve a lot of optimization problems frequently. One of the most important uh, energy management functions is optimal power flow. So optimal power flow, we solve this problem roughly every five to 15 minutes in power grid. This is an optimization problem, the most crucial energy management function in power grid. We solve this optimization. Objective function is to minimize generation costs. We solve this optimization whose, whose objective is to minimize power, power generation costs. 
and constraints are we have to satisfy all components constraint are, are grid constraint and we want to make sure we have a feasible operating point uh, all lines are within the limit voltages are within the limit and at the same time power production cost is minimized. This is an optimization problem that we usually solve every five, every five minutes in power grid. So it is a very large and very computationally expensive problem. For real time power grid, we have millions of constraints, millions of uh, uh, actually, and um, not millions, hundreds of thousands of uh, constraints. And, and solving such a problem, it is very time consuming, very time consuming. Uh, it, it, you have to do a lot of assumption, a lot of simplifications to be able to solve this problem in a reasonable amount of time. So to be able to solve it in five minutes, what we do, indeed, uh, actually, we make a lot of assumption. We do a lot of assumption that sometimes those, those assumptions make the final solution infeasible uh, from a grid, a grid perspective. But we have no other option but doing that. And uh, I think you know, uh, one application of machine learning could be this uh, problem. So machine learning has been used to solve optimal power flow problem. Different, different sort of machine learning, uh, dif different types of machine learning and this different sort of uh, approaches have been uh, uh, actually reported in the literature. For example, uh, many, many papers use machine learning like support vector machine, deep neural network, to train a learner that reads demand and based on that, based on power demand, uh, predict or, or actually for, uh, estimate the um, mm -hmm. power, uh, power pr production by generating units. So this is a kind of black boxing, but the main issue is uh, even if you can guarantee 99% accuracy, uh, it is not good for power grid because power grid is highly nonlinear and complex system. As long as you don't have 100% accuracy in your prediction or estimation, uh, the final solution might be infeasible. So it might be useless actually. So um, that black boxing, many people are using that, but it has its lim limitation. And other people use um, machine learning to have a warm store strategy for optimization problem. For example, they use machine learning. They do not use the solution of learner for, for as a power grid solution. They use that as, as the initial point of solving an optimization problem. So with that, we may be able to save time. We may be able to have a better initial guess for our numerical analysis and solve an optimization problem much faster than without having a good initial point. These are different approaches that you know, we can, um, people that are following to, saw, to use machine learning for OPD. Okay. This is the, one of the most uh, recent, uh, actually, approaches follow, uh, proposed in the literature. And one of them is also our paper. We do not use machine learning for direct uh, prediction of optimal power flow. Because as I said, even if I can guarantee the solution of the uh, learner or provides 99, even 0.9, 99.9 accuracy, um, power system operators are reluctant to use that because you may reach an optimal solution. Uh, I mean, even if in a, in a year period, even if you observe one prediction that leads to infeasible solution for the, for the grid, that is going to be a disaster in power grid. So they don't like to use it. So instead of direct prediction and estimation by learning, we said, okay, our optimization problem is very expensive, very computationally expensive. Why not using machine learning just to predict what constraints are important because uh, typically more than 99, 99 to 90, 95 to 99% of uh, these millions of variables and constraints, they are not important. They are redundant. They are not active in power grid. We can use machine learning to detect those active constraints. So we have a large set of, uh, of uh, constraints. We can only detect a small subset of that, which is usually less than 5% by machine learning. 
and then use that small subset to formulate an optimization problem. So it means you can solve that optimization problem much faster than the original problem. And at the same time, you can guarantee that the, op the solution that you provide for smart work is always feasible. So this is, and, and uh, th th this makes actually, uh, so somehow I can say this makes utility companies happy. Hey, okay, I, uh, there is no infeasibility. So they, 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 may be, they may be actually considering using this kind of you know, uh, approaches rather than black boxing because this kind of approaches, they can save time and at the same time, it guarantees uh, optimality of and feasibility of the result. This is actually the pr proposed training architecture of our approach that we propose. Our paper is um, available in archive. It is under review, but we, we have put the paper on archive and we have released our code on GitHub and data as well, also on IEEE, everything is done. So next please. Just as a sim as simple actually proof of concept that this method works well for power grid for time saving in decision making uh, in power system. Uh, we have tested different test systems. Uh, I triple um, a preferred non bus system, uh, 118 node system, 300 node, 500 node, and a realistic system with 13,000 buses. We solve, our, we solve OPF and truncated OPF, and we have observed that truncated, truncated means application of machine learning detecting in a, a, a actually important constraint and dropping all not important constraints. With doing that technique, we could have saved um, roughly 30% to 40% time as compared to the original optimization problem. 30% is good, and, good, is good. Uh, but we, right now we are working on that to enhance it uh, for more complex problems and, uh, and also enhanced time saving. But again, 30% time saving is very important in power grid because we are talking about decision making in, for real time applications. And if you can make you know, decision in power grid, uh, even if you can enhance quality of your decision, let's say optimality by 1%, we are talking about millions of dollars. We are talking about millions of dollars in power. Grid. Okay, now the, the, the third topic that I would love to talk today is AI and power, power grid and pandemic. This is a topic that I just started working on that. Some, not some, I think many people are right now are working on this topic. This is very important at the time of actually pandemic. Uh, during pandemic, power system operators and utility companies, they observe a big shift in their uh, consumption in power consumption. Uh, it, it makes sense because people stay at home, businesses are closed and, uh, and you know, power, uh, power consumption behavior changes. So on the left side figure, you see power consumption for New York City from for March 22nd, uh, 24 to, 20, to, to 30, uh, uh, 2019, and March 22 to 28, 2020 you see the big difference in uh, uh, consumption pattern. The same thing for California. The middle, side, the middle figure is showing the California uh, actually power consumption. And the right figure shows for Italy. You see the power consumption is changing drastically. Not only the amount of consumption, also the ramp rate. Ramp rate means the rate of increase or decrease in power consumption. These are very critical for power grid. If you, I mean, if, for, for, let's talk about ramp rate. If you are not ready for huge ramp up or ramp down, you may, you may see outage in the system. And if you see the, an outage, or let's say a generator outage, that generator outage may cause outage of a lot of loads and that load might be a hospital. So that is very critical to, to analyze load load pattern in the grid. And machine learning, can, can you go back please, Brian? Yeah, Mach, I mean, machine, many people right now uh, are using machine learning, AI and machine learning to see 
what to, to predict the behavior of pattern uh, during pandemic, even after pandemic, what would change? Because we are seeing many companies are uh, actually asking their employee to stay at home and work at home, even for a couple of years. So we see a huge shift in demand. How to, how to um, predict that machine learning is a good, uh, and AI, there are good tools to, to, to analyze and predict behavior of pa load pattern. Next, please. Now, uh, power consumption has a, dr a direct correlation with economy. In, the, in this figure, you see the impact of uh, COVID on the economy. In, in, I think it is in India, Europe, and United States, and the correlation with power of power demand. It means if you predict power demand, somehow you have an index to see the impact of uh, COVID or some some phenomenon on, on, on actually on, on economy. Also. Another problem, I think people who are attending this uh, conference, if they are from utility companies, they, they understand this topic very you know, easily. Business impact uh, and, uh, of, of COVID on their system. Many utility companies, they are observing lack of consumption by users. And lack of consumption by other uh, by, by users, and the problem is they don't want to shut any power, uh, anyone down. And they want to keep all loads energized. Businesses, they are not paying their bill. Utility, uh, I mean, and also some, some customers, they are not paying their bill. And utility companies, they are not shutting their power, their, uh, power down. So they are losing a lot of money. So they have to be prepared for the second, right now we are in the second and third wave we ha they have to have a good business plan to make sure they are prepared for the impact, impact of pandemic. I'm working with a utility company. I was talking to them. They said, we are losing a, a lot of money and we have a lot of, pro we have three projects with them. They requested, can you please hold off on sending us out invoice because we, have, we are observing no uh, uh, re revenue loss because of this pandemic. So if they can use machine learning and AI to predict demand behavior, uh, they, then they can have a better business plan to be prepared for third wave and also post pandemic. I have three more minutes so I should move faster. Uh, good resilience, this is actually last topic, good resilience and pandemic. It goes also to security of the grid, to strengthen of the grid, uh, and also to capability of the grid to respond to different phenomena. Let's say if we have hurricane in, I live in Louisiana, let's say if we have hurricane down in Louisiana, and if you have outage in the grid, uh, that outage at this time may cause outage of a lot of loads and a lot of critical loads, police stations, hospitals. That is gonna be a disaster. Like what happened in Florida a couple of years ago in a nursing home that many people, a few people died because of lack of electricity after a hurricane. So now at the moment, if a hurricane hits coastal areas or an, any other phenomenon, and if we ha observe power outage, particularly in hospitals and police stations, that is gonna be a disaster at the moment. So machine learning and AI can be used to analyze the grid uh, to make sure, to, 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 uh, to study resilience of the grid, to study probability failure of component, to study uh, actually capability of the grid to respond to unexpected phenomena, uh, to, uh, to make sure grid is resilient enough. Also to detect how to recover the grid. If, the, if you have outage, how to recover the grid as fast as possible to minimize power interruption. This is gonna be a very critical actually topic, particularly this summer in coastal areas to protect the grid as much as possible because we need to keep all loads energized. Okay, so I think right on time. So summary, uh, we can use, uh, machine learning, you can use that everywhere in, machine, in power grid. To be honest, I think the future of power grid even, even utility companies and power system operators, they know that. 
they have no option but moving towards using machine, lear machine learning and AI in Power Grid. Many of them, Power Grid, no power engineers, they don't like to change legacy of their system. They said, okay, system is working. Why do we need to change? It is a bit hard to convince them that, hey, a machine learning and AI is very good tools to, to be used in power, uh, for Power Grid analysis because they have a lot of data in Power Grid, a lot of data. And for example, we get from our utility partner, we got their data for the past 20, uh, 15 years, every one minute data, huge, huge amount of data. They said, we have this data, we don't know what to do with that, we have this problem. We could solve some, several problems with that data. So machine learning can be used for forecasts, for monitoring, for uh, say, uh, optimization, uh, and for demand uh, prediction in, in Power Grid. And I think future of Power Grid is definitely you know combined with machine learning even if i don't say it is definitely we can have a learner that takes care of the whole power grid which i don't believe in that but i do believe we will see a lot of machine learning application in real power grid right now you see that in, in papers but you don't see much in power real power system five years from now you see a lot of problems being solved by machine learning in real power systems and uh, that was it thank you very much I think I went one minute over time. Sorry about that. Oh, you're good. Uh, we did kind of run out of time for Q&A. I did not see anything come in, but we do have contact information here for Amin. So if you want to reach out to him, you can contact him here. Uh, we have his LinkedIn here as well. So thank you so much for joining us, Amin. We appreciate it.